My guy was Barton B.A. Booney. He's got a beer here that I've had for quite a while. <clears throat> Never had a chance to try it. I'm just trying to build a vertical. Um, I'm just trying to get with DJ and kind of do a weird vertical. But at the same time, it's like same beer, just different, you know, degrees of mature bur- uh, scotch. Might as well just damn do it. <laughs> Might as well just do it because, you know, you have five and about four or five in a row. There's a chance they're going to start tasting the same. I mean, in my perspective. So, so to, to allow each beer to shine by itself, I figured we'll just, we'll just do the beer. We'll do the beer. What beer? Cool it up. From Harvestons. From Scotland. Okay, so here we go. From uh, Alva, Scotland. And it is Harvestons.com. Harvey the Mouse. The little house mouse. And this one is Special 12 Reserve, so it's a 12 year uh, Highland Park Scotch. The single malt Scotch whiskey. So, and this is their, as far as I know, this is their old engine oil, the reserve version of their old engine oil, I believe. But I will tell you more about that in a second. Getting with a really hearty pour. And of course, it is black as night. Okay. Clear, clear as a bell. Something sticky in my mind. Clean that. Harvey's crown. Harvey's mouse. And here we go. Uh, there is a little tag to this one. With lots of words. Okay. Let's see. Will it up or black oil is so named because of the gluey and biscuits. This is when release has been matured in cast of Orkney's award winning Highland Park Distillery and adds complexity of whiskey notes, complimentary whiskey notes to what is already an amazing brew. It is chocolatey with a roasty bittersweet aftertaste from OrkneyMakeHarvest.com. And of course, the whiskey notes there is a 12, 16, and 18. Uh, different versions of it. There's the 30th anniversary, the 40th anniversary, and the 1991 special reserve, I believe. And, uh, and it talks more about how Highland Park and anything, but I do believe this is old and old for the base. Might be a little bit of a kicked up uh, version for the base, but it is pretty much bad. Pretty so, okay. The only other um, barrel aged or cast aged uh, one that I have from Harvest was so far with the Oric Tree. And yeah, I didn't really, I really didn't do that for me. It was too light for me to, you know, balance the barrel aging with beer so much. But like, a lot of people like it, so let's give this one a go. Oh my. Oh, wow, okay. Highland Park, you can definitely smell the scotch. That's not being hidden at all. 8% alcohol volume. I am. And actually, let me give you some notes on here, too, before I dive in. Because this one has the date of the bottling of 2009. Said I had it for a while. But yeah, definitely, 2009. So this has a definite time to age and mature. And it's hmm, seven years old. Yeah. There's a lot of... So you have the scotch, but there's like a prune and a raisin coming with that. A very ripe, juicy kind of dried raisin. Leather, smoke. A little chocolate definitely coming up through there. I'm doing it. Cheers. So much raisin. Yeah, I mean, it just that's a lot of raisin, but in a really wonderful way. Chocolate, raisin, you do get a little bit of that caramel, leather, like some bright. Yeah, 
I don't know if I want to say peatiness, but there's a nice smoke to this. But it's just super smooth. It is just smooth as hell. The body is a high side of medium in that kind of area. It's just a quarter, but it's, a, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful beer. From one sip, we're going to do it again. That's right. Yeah. That kind of bittersweet baker's chocolate is absolutely correct. I mean, just, it's there, but it's not adding a lot of sweetness. But the body of the beer has this nice brown bread, molasses, raisin, and then the caramel, leather, smoke, almost a twinge of a lemon now and again, just paint hints of that in the, in the stock. This is like, wow. It's this earthiness that is so smooth. And I guess the kind of that peaty smoke is coming through that the earthiness. But there's just a beautiful earthiness that's kind of just blending in and out of all this chocolate, raisin, caramel, molasses. It's so soft and soothing, though. It's not a bombastic... There's no bombastic note in this beer. Everything is complete, complex, subtle, nuancey. Yeah. Even the scotch itself, it's not harsh. It's not up front. It is very smooth. It's even behind something else. I mean, it is, wow. The smooth, subtle, soft, raisin chocolate is kind of the forefront in this. And everything else just plays on it. You'd think the scotch would be so bold. It would just kind of overtake everything, but in this one, it doesn't. I think age might have helped that quite a bit. I I've never had one fresh, obviously, but seven years, eight years age. It's just a beautiful, it's like a breath of, of, of a cloud. I mean, just like, it's just so smooth. Just beautiful, silky. Wow. Got back from Evan City. Um, went to the Living Dead UK. Good night, Living Dead. So, just happy to be back. Thought I'd crack open a nice beer and celebrate my safe return. You could chug this beer, but I'm not going to. <laughs> no, absolutely not. There's this bright waft of the, of the scotch at the end. Brings up earthiness, but brings up that chocolate with it, and then brings the raisin with it. Right at the end, and you just breathe it out. And it doesn't overshadow anything. It takes the beer along for the ride. And that is so impressive to me. That a beer that isn't, like if you have the irregular version of old engine oil, you would never want to put that in a, in a barrel. It would just overtake everything. But what they did, I don't know what they did or how they did it, but this beer, and, and age probably did, ha did help quite a bit. It's, it's so smooth. It's so blended. And every, and every little bit of it accents the other part. Which is really nice. I mean, it's the beauty of that art, the craft of this beer. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a thinner beer, it's a medium, not hovering in the mediums, but it's tasty, the flavors linger around, as you breathe it just livens up and just goes along, wafts away, kind of like I'm doing, wafting and wafting and wafting, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this as it is, I'm gonna end this one, this is a beautiful beer. Harvestons, old, old adub. Dub, 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 dub. I like that quite a bit. Quite a bit. And for what it is, it makes it 
for me, the way everything's blended, the way everything works with each other, even though it's a lighter beer, it works well, even with a heart and scotch is a rough beer, a rough liquor to blend with things. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's its own king in its own castle to start with. So I am so impressed by this, I'm going to throw it to a 9.5 for me, personally. So 9.5 out of 10 for Ula Dub to 12. There are others, and please do by, by means get all of them and let me know what you think of them. Um, <clears throat> before the, I, I hit the close button, I'll show you all the other ones I have. Nineteen ninety one reserve. Ula Dub 12 series. <coughs> 16 and 18 still yet to come. If I can find them, I haven't found them yet. So, it's been Paul Pierre Bruce.